what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the all new Latte Panda Delta 3 so I've actually been looking forward to this for a long time now I think it's been three years since they released the original Delta and we did a lot of testing with that we also added an external GPU and we're going to be doing the same with the Delta 3 when it comes down to it, this should offer better performance on the GPU and CPU side of things, but if you're not familiar with these Latte Panda boards, basically what we have here is a single board computer powered by an x86 CPU. So these are capable of running Windows, Linux, and basically any other operating system that supports an x86 SoC. And as you can see, this thing is tiny. So I've got a full-fledged PC right here on my hands. We've got USB 3.2. It will support an NVMe SSD. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and a bunch of other features built into the Delta 3. And the form factor hasn't changed much at all from the original Delta, but basically everything on this unit has been upgraded, including the Wi-Fi, the USB, and one of my favorite things here, the USB Type-C, which actually powers the board, also does video out. So you can run this in single cable operation mode as long as you have a monitor that puts out PD power and display in. But yeah, overall, there's a lot that I want to do with this board. And in my next video, I will be connecting an external GPU. So let me know exactly what GPU you want to see running on this. I'm not going to go super high end with it because everything's going to be bottlenecked anyway. But if you do end up getting one of these, obviously inside of the box, you're going to get the Delta 3. We've also got got some Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas, some plastic standoffs just to keep it up off of the table if you don't 3D print a case or buy one from the website, a 45 watt power supply, and the user manual. That's about it. And keep in mind that this will be powered over USB Type-C. And when it comes to I.O., over here on this side, we've got USB Type-C, and this is a full function USB Type-C port, so it will do data and video out, plus power the board. We also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, gigabit ethernet, and full-size HDMI 2.0B, so this will do 4K 60 out. Moving around to the other side, we get three full-size USB 3.2 ports, and you might notice on the top here we've got a lot of GPIO, and that's because this board actually has a built-in Arduino coprocessor. It's a Leonardo at Mega 32U4, so if you want to do some Arduino tweaking with this thing, you can definitely get it done. And taking a closer look at those M.2 slots, we have a key M and a key B. The key M slot is running at PCIe 3.0 2X, and it does support an NVMe SSD. And the key B is PCIe 3.0 1X. This will support USB 2.0, 3.0, a SATA adapter, or a SATA SSD. And it'll also support a 4G or a 5G module. So you could go fully mobile with this little board. And when it comes down to the basic specs, for the CPU we've got the Intel Celeron N5105. Four cores, unfortunately no extra threads here, but it will run at a clock up to 2.9 GHz. Built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units, and these will run it up to 800 MHz. 8 GB of LPDDR4 running at 2,933 MHz. A built-in 64 GB eMMC 5.1 module, and you can pick this up with Windows or without and install your own operating system. It also has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and you can install Windows or Linux, and basically any other operating system that supports an x86 CPU. So setup on these boards is really easy. If you pick the one up that already comes pre-installed with Windows, all you need to do is go ahead and plug it in. It's going to be running from that 64 gigabyte eMMC storage that's built in here. But 64 gigabytes isn't a lot nowadays, especially with Windows, so I do want to add more storage. And I've got two options here. I can go with an NVMe SSD, or I could go with just a regular old SATA M.2 SSD, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing, and I've got a good reason for it. I'm going to be using the NVMe slot, which does run at PCIe 3 2X for an external GPU. And like I mentioned, in my next video, we will connect a GPU to this, so let me know exactly what you want to see running on this unit. One of my new favorite features of the Delta 3 is single cable operation mode. Like I mentioned, we can do power in and display out at the same time over USB, and if you have a display or monitor that supports it, you'll only need one cable. You can go ahead and plug it in, power it up, and as long as that display does PD charging out up to around 15 watts, then you'll be good to go. So we don't have to have a ton of stuff plugged into this, like HDMI and power at the same time, as long as your display supports it. So far, using this just as a regular PC, everything's working out pretty well. I'm connected to my Wi-Fi 6 network. Everything loads up really quickly. 
pretty snappy little system, but there are a couple little things that I've noticed. So if we head over here, you can see that we've got that N5105, four cores, no extra threads, built-in UHD graphics with 24 execution units, but unfortunately, the RAM here is in single channel. And, uh, you know, if you're familiar with these iGPUs, they really do benefit from running this in dual channel because we're using this as VRAM also. It's got 8 gigs at 2,933 megahertz, but it's in single channel. And it is going to hurt the GPU performance. And with a lower end chip like this, every little bit helps. I really wish this was set up in dual channel, but unfortunately, single channel right out of the box. Been testing out some web browsing here and there, and yeah, I mean, we can definitely load up our pages fast enough with this little N5105. And uh, one thing I would like to do is just connect this on Ethernet. Personally, I like a wired connection, but the Wi-Fi 6 here is definitely fast enough. It'll get your pages loaded up pretty quickly. But uh, one thing I wanted to check out was a little bit of 4K video playback. And right now, and right now I'm at 1080p on this monitor with some scaling going so it's easier to see, but I'm just going to go straight to 4K with it. And from YouTube, we've got a 4K 60fps video. This is a little demo video that I like to run. Stats for Nerds up in the top left hand corner. It's not a super long video and by the end of it I had 8 drop frames, which is something you'd never notice unless you had that Stats for Nerds on screen checking out those drop frames. But overall, yeah, this little chip does handle 4K. I've actually tested it in the past in another mini PC with dual channel RAM, and I didn't get any drop frames with that. And I really think it comes down to running that RAM in dual channel. It really does help out with that integrated GPU. Now, before we move over to gaming and emulation, I did run a couple benchmarks here. And keep in mind that this is all stock. I haven't messed with any of the TDP from the BIOS or used any third-party applications like Throttle Stop. But out of three runs with Geekbench 5, the best I could get out of it, single core of 632 multi 2001. I also ran a quick 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that iGPU. Total score 2381. So obviously this little board isn't going to win any benchmark awards, but it's not pulling that much power. I mean, while gaming, we're right there at around 12 watts total system power consumption. And speaking of gaming, let's go ahead and test some out. And the first one we have here is OG Sky RAM 720p, low settings, and to my surprise, even with that single channel RAM, we're running this at 60. I completely understand that this is an older game, and I went straight to low settings given the fact that, you know, I've tested this chip before, but even like this, I think we could take some of these settings up to medium. Here's the Art of Rally, really awesome game and one of my favorite indie games nowadays. Uh, we do get some dips under 50 and right now I'm at lowest settings, 720p. And of course I wanted to throw at least one source game in here. We've got Left 4 Dead 2, we're at 720p, medium settings, and we can get well over 80 FPS with this game. Again, I know it's an older one, but we're working with a low-end chip here with low-end graphics. Moving over to some emulation, I got a few to test here, but uh, first up we've got PSP using PPSSPP, Vulcan Backend, Chains of Olympus, 3x resolution, running great. So yeah, I mean, this little chip can definitely handle PSP emulation. There might be a couple harder to run games that you have to drop it down to 2x, but it still looks great on a big screen. Moving over to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan backend, native resolution. Now I have tested the same exact game and emulator on the same chip with dual channel RAM and I was able to go up to 720p with it. But unfortunately, when I take this up to 720p, we get a lot of dips under 60 due to this not having a dual channel setup. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a harder one to emulate, and there are games that can go up to 720p on this, but this one just isn't one of them. I also wanted to test a little bit of PS2 emulation, and I'm going to tell you right now that this chip isn't great with PS2, but there are some easier to emulate games that work at the native resolution. We're using the DirectX 11 back end here with Tekken 5, and it's running pretty decently. And finally, we have the SimU emulator for Wii U. This is Bayonetta 2, and going into this, I knew we weren't going to get amazing performance out of it. I was hoping we could at least run this game at a steady 30, but as you can see, we do get a bunch of dips. 
Another thing I always like to test with these little boards is total system power consumption. So through all of my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. At idle, 3.7 watts. Average gaming, 12.5. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the GPU and CPU was 15.9 watts from the wall. And that one's an extreme test, so you probably won't see that much at all. So overall, it's actually offering some pretty decent performance. I really wish they would have added dual channel RAM here. And I think one of my favorite things about this is that single cable operation mode. Really awesome if you have a monitor or a display that supports it. And this thing isn't much bigger than a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, like I mentioned, I do have a lot planned for this board. I'll have a full emulation showcase video coming up in Windows and Linux, and we're definitely going to be adding an external GPU. I personally was going to go with the RTX 3060, but if you want to see something with a little less power, let me know. Even if I was to go with something like a 1650, we're still going to be bottlenecked by that M.2 slot and the CPU on this thing but it'll still offer much better GPU performance than we're getting out of the integrated graphics right now. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in seeing more with the Latte Panda Delta 3, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. And if you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I'll leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.